Welcome everyone! This is my third installment in my video series that I am calling my top 27 in 27. That is to say, my favorite crafting tools and products in 27 years of doing paper crafting. Now, I was originally going to call this my top 25 in 25, but then two years later, here we are. So I've no longer been paper crafting for 25 years. I've been paper crafting for 27. And then I sat down and made my list and I really have closer to 30 items or even broader categories of things that I really enjoy using. And I didn't really want to wait till I hit 30 years of paper crafting before I made this video. And so we're calling it my top 27 in 27 take a good look at the items that are here on my desk today. I've made a new mess to show off for all of you. Can you guess what we're going to be talking about? That's right, we're going to talk about adhesives today. There are so many ways that you can just take two objects, such as two pieces of paper or paper and fabric, and stick them together. And so we're going to be discussing a few of my favorite ones today, what I feel are the advantages to some of these, and talking over some disadvantages, if there are any, and basically my preferences. Now, of course, you are free to form your own preferences, but hopefully some of this will be informative or may give you ideas. These are just the items that I like to try and I like to use. There are many, many more out there. And so I hope that as we're going through this series and as we go through today's video, you will feel comfortable chiming in and letting me know what you like to use. So I'm gonna make a little bit of space in my mess and then we'll go through and talk about these more in detail an item at a time. Our first item of business we're gonna be talking about today is score tape. So score tape is a nice double-sided heavy-duty sticky tape and I first learned about it when I started doing mini albums and making those by hand. So the ladies used a lot of score tape to hold everything together and it's got a good tight bond. This particular brand is by Su Kuang but it comes in this package that says square tape. Or it looks like this. And you can get it in a variety of widths, the one quarter inch, one eighth, I've got three eighths, one half, and you can go up from there. And I buy mine on Amazon. But it's a premium double-sided adhesive. It is acid-free, heat resistant. I have heard from people in areas that have more humidity that it does break down over time. So I can't speak to that, but I like it. I think it's a good, very heavy duty, adhesive and I can trust it. Along with that is this other product that I have heard described as red line tape. My particular one here is an eighth of an inch. Again, you can get it in different widths and I find this in various places. I believe I ordered this one online though, maybe even through scrapbook.com, I'm not sure. I know I've found it at Michael's or I've seen it at Michael's and it is also a nice durable double-sided tape. The thing I really like using this for is for binding my spines together and holding everything in place when I am making a journal that has signatures that need to be sewn in. This is an excellent way to glue your pieces together, especially if you're covering your spine with paper instead of fabric. This is a really nice way to make sure that everything sticks and stays really well over time. Now there are a variety of knockoffs. I have this one. And I think this is a nice, good all-purpose one. And that one actually is a newer item at the Dollar Tree. So it's the Crafters Square brand at the Dollar Tree. And uh, because I use this a lot less frequently now than I did originally, so I feel like this is a nice affordable way to go. It is archival and acid-free. So when you're laying down pictures in an album or something, that is also a really nice item for for using in your albums, your photograph albums, or say you're wanting to make a mini album and make sure that you have the archival factor so that the person's pictures are always preserved, that's a good way to go. 
And then I also found when I was scrounging around in my drawer, I think I picked this one up at Tuesday morning maybe. I'm not really sure. It's not a brand I'm really familiar with. And then this one was a freebie in an order from scrapbook.com. So I generally ha use the one quarter inch and the half inch. So that's our first item of the day, score tape and red line tape. My next items are closely related to the score tape and that is the advanced tape glider which is a tape gun or using one of these smaller versions of the tape runner. I believe I talked about these a couple of weeks ago in the video on what basic supplies you should purchase when you're starting paper crafting but I did some editing so honestly I don't remember. But when I first came back to paper crafting and was getting into the mini albums and such, a lot of ladies were using this. It is basically a giant version of the tape runner. You get a big roll, so you can use it on a bigger size project. You can, you know, you don't run out as quickly and then you can interchange and replace the tape with, um, with these refill rolls and of course these are made by scotch there's two in each package i do not use this one as much anymore either and partly because i do like how when you use wet glue it dries and very often if you don't cover up the tape just quite right on any of these double sided tapes your products might stick down in the pocket like your tag you'd slide it in and then it may stick down in the corner so that's that's kind of a downside to it, but it did it did serve a really good purpose and it is really nice for when I'm trying to put big pieces of paper together and line them up. A quick tip that is nice to know when you're using any of these because they grab pretty immediately and they do not let go. But that is that if you are worried about placing your pieces of paper together or that they won't line up just right. And then another advantage of the wet glue is that you have a little bit of wiggle room if you if you have a glue that's not a fast grab type. And so it is nice to be able to adjust the papers and get everything lined up just so before the glue dries. But on these tape glider types, I've laid down my glue. I'll try to get it where you can see the glare. There it is. So what you can do with this, any of these tape, double-sided tapes that you lay down, is take a little glue stick and run over that, that tape line. And that gives you just a little bit of wiggle room on your paper before everything glues together. And then of course, the glue stick dries completely and it doesn't stay wet, so you have a good adhesion and nothing's gonna be sticking inside your pocket. This particular tape runner is by AdTech, and I like these because they're small. Sometimes you just want to put a little double-sided tape in a little place or maybe stick your clusters together, Use you know, just tack things down. These are nice, and the reason I chose this brand is because, first of all, you can get it at Walmart. You might have to order it at, through walmart.com and just have it delivered, but they have the four pack, and then they have these handy refills these do use up pretty quickly. So they are permanent, they're refillable, and I don't know if they are acid free, oh, photo safe, acid free, yeah. So those are nice if you're doing your scrapbooking. One thing I have found now that I'm doing more in the way of junk journals rather than actual scrapbooks or albums is that I don't worry as much anymore about acid free. I just don't. It's, um, it's kind of become a non-issue, or you can back your photo or your precious piece of paper onto something that's acid-free and then lay it on the surface that may not be. So that is something to be aware of, and that's a whole nother discussion about being acid-free. <laughs> but it's, it's a debate that started with the scrapbooking movement and has continued on. So that is something I thought I would point out if you're conscious of the acid-free features of things. So we have our tape guns, tape gun or tape runner. You have your your score tape or double-sided tape. You can even buy the the uh, like Scotch brand double-sided tape that's in a basic tape dispenser like you find at the grocery store and that works just as well. That might be more of what you need, you know, just kind of be creative. 
I brought this one out because it is a type of tape and this is medical tape. And this is really nice for reinforcing your seams or reinforcing where you want to make sure that, say the corners of your spine that are gonna be bent back and forth as the book is opened, you want to make sure that they don't wear out over time. This kind of medical tape or something like this is a really nice tape for reinforcing and holding two pieces of paper together over a long period of time because it is essentially like a fabric, you know? It's got that consistency. So that's that's something you can find usually pretty inexpensively at a drugstore or the Dollar Tree or that kind of place. I always mention the Dollar Tree because I don't have a Dollar General here. And this, we don't have the Daiso, I think is the other one. Uh, we just have Dollar Tree. So if I want, if I want something, then that's where I go. The next category that I have under adhesives is a stapler. Now I use this basic stapler. I use it a lot. And at one point I even found some colored staples that go in it. And I have started just storing them in there and switching them around within, within the stapler itself instead of trying to switch out and only have pink or only have blue. I just open it and then say, I want a green staple that time instead of pink coming out the front. I'll just move the green one to the front. I find this a lot easier in terms of just being quick and easy to use. So you can find colored staples. I just stumbled across these. When these run out, I have no idea where I will get more. <laughs> but I like the look that those give, or you can just use your basic standard metal staple. This one is by Swing Line and it is jam free and it is an easy grip, comfort grip I think is what they call it and it just staples so nicely. We use these at work and so when I came home I decided to invest in one for myself. They're not that much more than your basic $6 stapler so to me it was worth it to have my hands happy. This one is a very popular one and this is the Tiny Attacher by Tim Holtz Ideology that you see a lot of the ladies use and it just makes a teeny tiny little staple. Oh, it's out. <laughs> okay, so here we can take a moment then and figure out how to refill it and I'll show you really fast. This, the squeezy trigger thing here, also very comfortable for using in your hand. You just pull this up, this swings open. Let me grab my staples. Was not planning to have to do this on camera. I was trying to be quick and efficient. My phone is having trouble saving my videos and I'm only saving one at a time, switching it to my laptop and then then deleting it off my phone and going to the next one. But for some reason, man, I spent hours today, kept saying there was not enough storage. I hope I have that problem figured out, but it could be related to the new um, issue with the, with the 5G, you know? I don't know. It's the drive to force us all to get what they want us to spend our money on. Okay, so the staples just drop down in here and you fold it back up. Give this just a gentle squeeze to get the, get the trigger around the, the, the nose here of the staple and then there you go. Makes a cute little size staple as opposed to the standard size staple that you see here. So staples are a nice, staplers are a nice tool to use. They add kind of that industrial metallic look to products. You don't have to wait for them to dry. You know, they're relatively inexpensive and you just buy the staples to refill and you're good to go. So that's, that's another option. My next item is kind of along the same line as the tape runner, but it's not quite identical. And actually, I'm going to kind of put two into this category. The first one is these photo mounting squares. They're just little half inch squares. This particular box is a very small, ultra ultra small, and these are clear. But these, these are for putting, you know, attaching really thin pieces of paper to your page. And they're clear, so you can put them on things like vellum or tissue paper or something that's a little more transparent. And then you just pull out however many you need and they just run out of the box. This is my box of regular ones. So as you see, it's kind of a like a half inch by, I don't know, it, it's really a square because when you take off the adhesive piece, it's just a square. 
these are, this particular box or brand is initially repositionable, which means you put it down and if you're like, oops, I didn't get that quite where I want it, you have a little bit of time to pick up the picture or the item off of your page and put it where you do want it before it sticks completely. So typically they come in this white color, but as I just showed you, you can get them also in the clear, which I used quite a lot of way back when, so I still have quite a few in my stash. And then something very similar to that are the glue dots. There are several different sizes. I found these at Walmart, and I don't know if they still carry them because I've had them for a little while. But the glue dots are super nice for holding, say you want to put something in the center of your flower. You know, if you want to put a gem like in the middle of a fabric flower or a paper flower, these are really nice because they're not messy. They, they're immediately dry, you know, not like a wet glue. And you just stick it to the object face down, right where you want it, and then you peel away the backing here, and then put your gem or what have you on it. And these are really nice, especially for, again, for small pieces. Sometimes they come in a tape runner type style, like similar to this, but it will say glue dots on it. And I don't remember the brand, it's been a while. That was another one of those items that when it was first introduced, I was very challenged on how to use it correctly because I kept trying to roll back and forth and you're supposed to roll toward you, pick it up and re-roll, but I had trouble. These I used quite often too. And these are 3 8 inch wide, also acid free. And these are from EK Tools. I don't know if they still make them because I've had these for a long time, but this is just a bigger version of the glue dot. So glue dots have their place as well, depending on what you're wanting to stick down. And I would kind of consider these to be similar in um, nature, you know, and, and in category, I guess. Another type of adhesive dot, if you're wanting to give some dimension to your project, whether it's a stamped image or pictures or what have you, maybe you wanna raise up the flowers off the page or, or give some dimension to what's on your cover, these adhesive foam dots are nice, and I have found them in a variety of places. Some are stickier than others. I think this one was actually a freebie that came with something. But then when I was re reintroducing myself back into paper crafting, I got a really good tip, and that was you can go to the Dollar Tree and get this foam mounting tape. And this one is made by, it says the original Super Glue. I don't know if it's a Super Glue product or not, but, this will also give dimension, and these are nice because they're segmented, so you don't have to get your sticker, your scissors all sticky by trying to cut off the piece you need. It's already in a pretty small piece. Same with the adhesive foam dots. They're already in a small size, so you don't have to really cut them down to fit on a piece that you're trying to stick down, because usually you're using this on something that's small. So foam mounting tape is good. My next category is a specific kind of glue. I'm gonna talk more about the other glues in just a minute that are more wet glues, but this is a specific kind of glue and I use this on very specific projects where I want to get a flat look. I really want a good bond and I want my papers to lay smooth. Use a spray adhesive. So this is the Elmer's Craft Bond brand. I mean, there's a bajillion brands out there. I use this one because it's handy. I can get it at Walmart and I think you, uh, Hobby Lobby as well. And probably, I think it's pretty common. You could probably find it in a lot of places. So it tacks quickly. It is also acid free. And then you just spray the, the base surface and then lay the top one on top of it. They are pretty sticky and so you don't get a lot of give, you don't get a lot of wiggle time <laughs> if you don't get your paper on there right. You just kind of really, you kind of got to be pretty precise when you lay it down. Now this one I found more recently at the Dollar Tree and I showed this off in my series where I was making the blue journal because I did use this on some pages. And there were, I showed you two bottles. I'd gotten them both at the Dollar Tree. This is how this one looks. The other one has a gray cap and a little bit different picture here, but they say they're the same brand and the same thing. So this is a nice little bite-sized, you know, if you don't want to buy the big one or you're not going to use it very often, go for the smaller one. And then more recently at the Dollar Tree, I have found this style that's more like a pump style adhesive spray and it's by Beacon. 
So this says it works on paper, wood, cardboard, and more. So I would definitely consider using these especially if you have those pages where you want to put two sheets of paper down, you don't want any wrinkles, you want a beautiful flat look, a spray adhesive is a nice way to go. I should be lining all these up so you can see them as I talk about them. Okay, next we're going to talk about wet glues. It's gonna take me a minute. <laughs> I have arrayed in front of you a lovely spread of a variety of types of wet glue. There are many, many more than what are here. I just don't use those kinds. <laughs> so the one thing I can say about wet glue is that you are going to arrive at your favorites in two parts. First by word of mouth and watching the other crafters seeing what they do with it because I was very confused about what the point and the purpose of the different kinds of glues were when I first started. So that leads me to part two, trial and error. You're just gonna go try some and see if you like them. It's kind of a rotten way to have to test them out, but use, you know, maybe use it on a project that you're not as worried about, or maybe you're making something for your kid's birthday, so you need a glue to try out, and then you're just gonna throw away all the party hats at the end, so who cares if you don't like the glue? Nothing, nothing really lost there. So trial and error and word of mouth are your two best ways to guess. And of course, everyone has its own purpose. So we'll start with the glue stick. This is my personal favorite, the Elmer's Craft Bond in the extra strength. They have some that are repositionable. So do be careful and make sure it does say extra strength. And I believe, yep, permanent bond right there on the, on the label. I order these quite often through Walmart or I go to Walmart pickup and one time they gave me the wrong thing and so it's very disappointing when you want your pages and things to stay stuck on the page and they've accidentally given you repositionable. <laughs> Defeats the purpose really. So the Elmer's Craft Bond, there's the Yoohoo glue which was a favorite of mine in my early crafting days. It was one of the few acid-free ones you could get back then, but as you'll notice, a lot of these now say acid-free or photo-safe, so those are all good indicators. And essentially that just means they're more archival. There is a paste out there called Yes Paste that was popular back when I was starting, and it still is used by a lot of crafters. It's um, its, its own product. I've never tried it because I never could afford it, and now I'm not that interested in it really. I have enough other choices here so I know that's a good one. So a glue stick or a paste. Then I'm showing you a couple of examples of things that I found at the Dollar Tree. Craft glue. It's just from Crafter Square and I would say it's very basic similar to this Aliens Clear Gel Tacky Glue. And then this one, the Foam and Poster Board Adhesive. I have not tried this yet. I bought it in part because it has the right kind of cap on it so that when my other one on my Fabri-Tac breaks, I have a spare. <laughs> Poor decision-making guide, I know. That's probably not the best way to do it. But I do wanna try it out and it's only a dollar. So I've seen other people use them and they seem to be very happy with this glue. So I'm looking forward to that. And it is made by my favorite, one of my favorite companies, Beacon. And they also made this spray adhesive over here that's being offered at the Dollar Tree. So Beacon has the advantage of being one of our most favorite fabric glues that will hold fabric and paper. And then depending on if you're getting Fabri-Tac, there's also Fabri-Fix, there's the three-in-one. I believe the Fabri-Fix is waterproof and so you can use it like for fixing a hem or something that has frayed and then when you wash it the glue won't come undone so and this one says it's also waterproof so they each have their own different um, characteristics that make them desirable this one says it's more of a fast dry instant grab whereas this one gives you a little more time to work with it they all bond fabric leather wood trim paper and really the main thing is is the three-in-one frankly is a little bit less expensive than the Fabri-Tac name. So they're all made by Beacon, they're all terrific. If you want an alternative to the Fabri-Tac, this is the Aileen's, I found it at Hobby Lobby for $6.99. The Fabri-Tac comes in this four ounce and an eight ounce size, and so it's, what's it up to now? When I was last, last bought it, it was like 13 or $14, and I think it's now like 16 for the eight ounce, I'm not sure. 
I tend to buy mine through a seller on eBay because I use the best price I can find. Hobby Lobby's discontinued their coupons, or I would recommend that you go there and do it that way, but you can't get a 40% off coupon anymore, but that did make it more affordable. So this is a this is the first fabric glue I tried, and I did talk about this a little bit, I think, in my basic tools video. It's got a lot of gunk on there, doesn't it? But I cut the tip too far down, and I don't like it. So what I really need to do is just put it in another bottle, and it seems to do the job. I'd actually purchased it for some gems that I was gluing on my daughter's homecoming dress when she was in high school, but it does not do gems. You have to buy a gem tack, which is a different kind of very specific glue for that. And so I, I ended up not being able to use this like I wanted, and then I, I really stick with these guys. But I, I have this bottle out so I can use it more. Another Aileen's product that you see a lot of people use is this basic tacky glue in the bronze bottle and everybody seems to love it. It also waters down very nicely so you could make your own Mod Podge with it. This is probably one of my most favorite glues I use all the time. Looks like it's getting low. The Aileen's Clear Gel Tacky Glue All Purpose Adhesive Dries Clear Does Not Do Fabric. You get your wiggle room, it's not a fast grab, so you get a little time to reposition your items and smooth everything out, but I really like it and it's affordable. And I talked about this as well. I talked about a lot of these glues in my, my first video about basic tools. So you can refer back to that. All of these videos will be linked up in the cards at the end of the video in the um, end screens. And um, I'll have that playlist so you can refer back to all the videos in this series. Now, this gives you wiggle room. This is a very popular one by Art Glitter Company. It's called the Art Glitter glue, but there's no glitter in it. It's just a nice white glue. Dries clear. All of these dry clear. I think even that one does. So that is a major selling point for any crafty glues that if you get a glob, you don't want it to show up on your paper. You want it to at least to be a clear blob. <laughs> so the art glitter comes in the four ounce size or the bigger eight ounce, and you can refill the Use the eight ounce to refill the four ounce. It comes with a fine tip that I have stopped using for a variety of reasons, and I talked about that in my first video. But even if you don't get the metal fine tip, it still has a pretty fine tip. So you can kind of get the glue exactly where you want it. It is acid free and um, water based permanent. You do not get any time to move your paper. Once you put those two pieces together with this, they are stuck. So get them where you want them and then lay them down because you don't get to you don't get a chance to redo. I have this one included in the group because this is a brand that they use in the UK and since my brother lives there, I asked him to bring me some a few years ago, so they brought me three bottles. At that point, it was about 8 pounds a bottle and it is a really nice all-purpose glue. Uh one of the things I didn't mention is that a lot of these when you get too much glue or you get a glue glob, you can just rub your fingers over it and it kind of gums up the glue and it wipes off like a, an eraser would do. So the Beacon does that. This I think is a really nice alternative, frankly, to the Beacon Fabri-Tac 3-in-1 or this Aileen's Clear Gel Tacky Glue. So the Kalal All-Purpose Glue, I was watching a crafter and she used this. So if you're over in the UK or somewhere you can get this, Give it a try if it's not too outrageous on your budget. I really liked it. So he brought me three bottles and I'm still using them up. Okay, we still have a few that are kind of random things. And I'm showing you first, I'm showing you the Dollar Tree size. And I think you can actually get this really tiny size at a lot of, a lot of craft stores. It's by Plaid and it's the Mod Podge brand and it's for decoupage and doing collage. It seals, it coats, it glues. I don't know how long it, how well it holds up over time, to be honest. I, I honestly would not use this as a permanent glue, but I've seen a lot of ladies do it and they seem to be fine with it. The bigger jars you can get in the eight ounce size and I prefer the matte, but they have sparkle. They have the traditional one has got a gloss finish to it. Um, and then there's several others that I don't remember what they are, but I tend to make my own So that's why I wrote two to one on top and the M is for matte. The other one says S for sparkle But I use my all-purpose 
Elmer's glue. It has to be the all-purpose or multi-purpose glue for this to work is what I've heard. So I just dilute it, two parts glue to one part water. If you want it a little thinner, add some more water. And I keep it in my Mod Podge jar because it's very handy. A couple of other items, uh, a couple of other ways to glue things together. Glossy accents, very strong. It gives you kind of a dimensional look and a clear look. It takes forever to dry. So you want to clamp your item in place and let it dry. It takes hours. <laughs> so it gives a nice effect and it's also for some of these harder things to stick together or that you want to glue down. Like I used it on some um, pearl type embellishments and I clamped them in place and now they're not going anywhere. So glossy accents is not just an accent on your paper but a very nice adhesive that a lot of people use. And then there are these little glue pens. I have a couple different kind. They're also very handy because if you just have something tiny and you just need that one little dot of glue, these are nice. These work really well, so I still have them. Although when they're used up, I probably won't replace them truthfully. Okay, I think that pretty much covers it. Everything that I wanted to talk about and the things that I like to use. I would say out of all of those, my favorites are the score tape, um, either the Aileen's or the Beacon Fabri-Tac fabric kind of glue. And then every everybody else has their own specific use, so I tend to like it for the use that I need it for, particularly the spray adhesives, the Mod Podge, that kind of thing. So what about you guys? Do you have a favorite glue or other type of adhesive? So yeah, please write below in the comments if you have a favorite glue or what your favorite adhesives are to use, I would love to hear from you because there are just so many. But these, I feel, cover a gamut or you could at least find a lot of these, something similar where you are and um, do all kinds of good things with them. The other question I had was if you would like me to cover any other topics. So if you have anything that you are interested in hearing me share about that is something that I have <laughs> and that I know something about, then I'm more than happy to share uh, share with you my thoughts on that or to talk about that product. Remember, this is my top 27 in 27, so I've had a lot of time to accumulate some favorites. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and remember to hit the subscription button, the little red button, if you want to see more of my content and then ring the bell down below and that will notify you every time I have something. As a wrap up, just remember each of these glues serves a specific purpose and so I would say, especially when you're starting out to pick something that fits more than one purpose or that you can use in more than one way and then as you find that you have need of something then move on from there you don't have to go out and buy the whole shopping cart all at once just pick a good maybe good fabric glue a good white glue wet glue and maybe a good glue stick and go from there and I would say almost everybody has a stapler around the house somewhere so um, that's always a nice thing to have as well so guys that wraps it up for this week our inspirational thought for the day reads, Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. That's from Philippians 2.4. So don't just be interested in your own things that you need to do to take care of your own business, but also help look after other people as well. And with that, dear friends, we have wrapped up another episode of our Top 27 in 27. So until next week, I want you to be inspired and do something creative today. Bye-bye.